temporal situation. It doesn't define you. It defines the challenge. But how long you stay there is up to you, and this takes me to the that point. My that point. Barry, you're dead. Barry, you're dead. You see, I read of a story of a woman who was in love with her husband. They were lover birds, to say the least. So mad that she couldn't let him go. So she decided to bury him in a transparent casket to kiss him good morning in the morning and kiss him good night before she sleeps. Without realizing her habit, in just about three months, she suffered from ulcers, oppression, depression, suppression, obsession, all the sessions, you know? <laughs> she went to a psychiatrist who said three words, bury your dead. And as soon as she agreed to bury the dead, she regained her conscience, she regained her health. Hard as it might sound tonight, bury your dead situations. Don't live with the dead. Even Jesus said, let the dead bury themselves. You cannot do any single iota about yesterday. You cannot turn back the hands of time. You have no capacity to change what happened 6 o'clock this morning. But you have the capacity to change what will happen to you tonight, 10 o'clock. Bury your past ordeals in the sea of forgetfulness. You see, wisdom is not just thinking right and saying right, but doing right. Wisdom is taking an action. Like Albert Einstein once said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep the balance, you must keep moving. Despite the fact that the storm was only for 40 days, no one stayed in the ark for more than a year. It is time you learned when the season at the doldrums is over. It is time you learned when the storm is over and move on. Don't dwell in that situation far too long. I know people who like showing, showcasing what they were going through. They even keep pictures, you see? I was doing so well, look at my shop. It went on flames. Look at how the terrorists did. Ten years down the line, we are still discussing it. Am I communicating to anyone? Yes. But does it help you? It doesn't help you. Dust off, rise up, move on. You see, winners argue, I'll feel good when I take a step. Winners argue, I'll take a step when I feel good. Are you a winner? Are you a winner? Things will begin to take shape when you take a step, but keep moving, keep moving. You see, in a small town known as Enterprise, Alabama, the farmers were planting cotton and it was attacked by the boll weaver. It was utterly destroyed so bad that there was no hope for these farmers. This was just at the conclusion of the First World War and the economy was so bad, <coughs> in recess, if you like. And then the farmers decided to try a different crop altogether and they planted peanuts. The harvest was so bounty, they had never experienced such cash flow in the history of that little town. They were so excited that they decided to erect a statue in honor of the boll weaver. <laughs> the only statue in honor of an insect pest in the whole world. How many of you have ever heard of that statue? The boll weaver statue? For sure Kenyans don't read, eh? <laughs> but it's a very interesting story. Go read about it. They turn their lemon into a lemonade. A lemon is a bitter fruit. A lemonade is a sweet juice. Oprah turned her lemon, the brutal rips, into a lemonade. A huge talk show. Turn your lemon into lemonade. Are you there? Yes. Principle number five and the last one. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. And I want to pull some three points beneath this principle. And the very first point I want to share with you, you will feel alone. When you are down and beaten and broken, you will certainly feel alone. Biblically speaking, I see some characters who felt alone. Elijah the prophet did the greatest manifestation of the power of God at Mount Carmel. He slew himself in person 450 prophets of Baal, prophets of 
Jezebel, if you like. And the next day, Jezebel was so mad, he decided to look for the neck of Elijah. A man was so confident with the work of his God that he called people for a demonstration. He then told them to pour water on the altar. But then he heard a rumor, Jezebel, one woman, is looking for your neck. And Elijah ran away. And he told God, kill me. I can't face that woman. Kill me. I mean, they have destroyed all prophets of God. I'm the only one remaining. And please, please, it's over now. God, please, it's over. I'm not going to face any other ground zero. He felt alone. I wonder many times, why didn't he trust God to rescue him from one woman? John the Baptist introduces the Messiah to the world. In plain language, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Nobody had asked him that question. He knew the Messiah. The next moment he's in prison and he's the first one to doubt his prophecy. And he tells his disciples, please go find out. Was that really the Messiah? <laughs> I mean, for sure, if he's the Messiah, why am I in prison? He felt alone. What about the Messiah himself? You see, he lived a life that attracted enemy and foe and friend alike. Many times they wanted to stone him, but at ground zero, he felt alone. And that was at that old rugged cross. And for the first time, he confessed his lonely. He confessed. He said it, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabakdani, translated in the Aramaic language, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, the greatest poverty in life is not lack of food. The greatest poverty is loneliness. He felt alone. If Jesus could feel alone at his ground zero, you will feel alone. So I'm suggesting it's normal to feel down. It's normal to feel alone. But then this takes me to my second point. Point number two. Don't be alone. Don't be alone. Now, while it's normal to feel alone, I want to emphasize tonight, do not be alone. For many reasons. First, the enemy of your soul works through isolation. If he manages to isolate you, he will terminate you. See, the Bible does teach that the devil comes like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. And what the lion does, it is separates the prey. If there are many buffaloes, it can't hit them. The only way out is to separate one buffalo from the rest of the, of the flock, isn't it? From the herd. If the, you see, when we are in trouble, we like isolating ourselves. You see, the human behavior is this. We crave intimacy, but we fear vulnerability. We long for friendship, but we fear rejection. And the more insecure we are, the bigger the walls we build because we fear being exposed. So whenever we are hit by trouble, we like withdrawing. The first human reaction is withdrawal mechanism, trying to hide and trying to show the rest of the public everything is all right. What you're not realizing, when you get isolated, you get terminated. You must learn to work with partnerships. I'm not talking about old friendships, no. I'm talking about your purpose here. Identify your purpose in life and work with people you like and those you don't like for the sake of your purpose. Is this biblical? Yes, it is. I was taught this by God himself. Can I tell you? God uses the saints and the sinners. He used the upright and the prostitutes to achieve his purpose. He used the Jews and the Gentiles. He used men and women. He used children and adults. He used the slave and the free. He used kings and servants to achieve his purpose. He used very serious sinners. Read Isaiah 45. Even though it's Cyrus, you don't know me. I have anointed you for a specific mission to deliver Israel. God uses everyone, sinners and saints alike. And I suggest to you for the purpose of your purpose in life, for the sake of your purpose, work with everyone who will help you reach there. You may not like the media guys, eh? you know, our midst, but they know how to cover this event than you. Let's work with them. We may not like like or regency. Maybe the history is very controversial. No problem. It's helping us achieve our purpose. <laughs> you see, there's nothing in you that God created for isolation. And, and I'm going to make it worse here. The very first man, Adam, 
I want to give you a story here. God looked at him and said, you're lonely. He said, it's not good for a man to be alone. You agree with me? Yes. How come Adam was lonely and there were animals around him? How come? I mean, there were giraffes and pets. I, I've seen people looking for solace in pets. They buy cats and dogs. But, but Adam had a vision. And in this vision, he was seeing some footsteps of two men walking. I don't know whether the ground was soft or muddy, but he noticed footsteps of two men walking side by side. Then it dawned on him, whenever he was in trouble, he was only noticing the footsteps of one man. He got so disturbed and decided to ask the Lord, how come when the smooth somebody's son is imprisoned, somebody's son is in drug and substance abuse, somebody's friend has passed away? We don't know how to handle relationship breakdowns. We commit every one of us here tonight to you.